Well, thank you everyone for being here. I know it's been a great conference with so many workshops, so many things you've been doing. So now is, now is the, the end of the day and I will try to do my best to entertain you a little bit. Thank you, <laughs> everyone who made this possible. So I can be here, Javier. So, so it's La, the 20 years of, of La Escuela de Escritores is something lovely. So I, I was able to, to see all in different moments that we've been seeing each other, how hard you work. Uh, Javier, to, to make this possible. And it's great that France is now taking over the, this part of the European creative writing program. So this can keep uh, developing more and more conferences like this, where people share the passion for creative writing and education. That is super important. So it's true, I work in Iowa. I'm a faculty, I'm a professor at the University of Iowa. And it's pretty interesting because I teach Spanish creative writing. So I was able to develop an MFA in Spanish creative writing in an Anglo country with a lot of you know, complexities, but also with 35 million of Spanish speakers that are part of that country. So I'm going to tell a little bit uh, of the story, how I did it. So I hope I can give you ideas about the process. Um, as I was mentioning, the, uh, the, um, the Iowa Write Writers' Workshop was established in 1936. And there is something very interesting is at 1941, Paul Engel uh, took direction, is a poet who was graduate from the Writers' Workshop and took direction of the um, Writers' Workshop and decides after the war in 1946 that the workshop was going to have two lines, the poetry line and the fiction line. So there is also in the 60s, in the early 60s, Paul Engel again uh, got involved with the idea of um, translation and that made the, the idea of tandem translation, the work on translation. So the University of Iowa has a very strong uh, MFA program in literary translation. There is an, an, inter an interesting detail when we think about how we make the connection of Spanish-speaking community with the Writers' Workshop. And I will have to mention that Paul Engel, in 1965, invited José Donoso to be uh, teaching at the Writers' Workshop. Uh, he had a, um, a BA in Princeton, so he was fluent in English, so he came and he was at the University of of Iowa between 1965 and 1967. And in that moment, uh, Paul Engel, um, Jose Donoso, the writer, the Chilean writer, spoke about, ah, it would be very nice if we had here also a workshop in Spanish. But since that time, since 1965, 67, many years passed by because the Spanish MFA happened, you know, certainly decades later. In, in, in 2009 is when I went there to develop. So the MFA in Spanish Creative Writing at the University of Iowa was officially ratified on Thursday, February 16, 2012. Or at, least, or at least that was the day we celebrated in the All Capital Senate. But the story of the process and birth of the program is complex and full of elements that at times remind us of fiction itself. It was in the fall of 2008 when the Chicano writer Santiago Baquera Vázquez sent me a message to my email account at Dartmouth College with the announcement of a faculty position to develop and direct an MFA in Spanish creative writing at the University of Iowa. Many writers apply, but I had in my favor the American experience and the fact that I had participated in the creation and consolidation of two master's programs. During the years, I worked at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. This was 2001, between 2001 and 2003. That was my first job. After I finished my PhD at the University of Pittsburgh, I established a master's program for educators. And then during the years I worked at Dartmouth College in New England since 2004 to 2009, 
I dove full force into a project developed by James Sturm and Michelle Olley to build an MFA for cartoonists in White River Junction, Vermont. I must say that in part thanks to the Center for Cartoon Studies and all that I learned participating in the process of its organization between 2004 and 2009, I felt ready to face the adventures in Iowa. I, I remember that when I was leaving New England, when I had already accepted the position at Iowa, James Sturm gave me some excellent advice, wisely warning me about the difference between developing a master program within the context of a non-profit school like theirs and that of the state university like Iowa. He was completely right. The pressure one feels to fulfill the requirements in a regulated academic context can become absolutely brutal. For two and a half years, between August 2009 and December 2011, I worked furiously to put together all the documentation that will allow us to persuade the university establishment and the Iowa state regions to open and finance the program. Subsequently, I was the director of the program until December 2018. By then, I felt that the program was sufficiently established and it was time for others to take over running it and allowing me to get back to my writing. So I passed the torch to the Spanish poet Luis Muñoz. So I was needing, there was a moment I say, I need to write also, no? So I was lucky to be able to pass the torch. The, the program was very well established and to write the novel that I got, the Nadal Award, El Mapa de los Afectos, The Map of Affection. So during the years I lived in New England, before I left for Iowa, two key things happened that model my experience as a workshop creator. In the fall of 2007, my father, the writer Jose Maria Merino, was invited as a visiting professor to Dartmouth College to teach a seminar in the Department of Spanish and Portuguese on short story writing. Living with him was fantastic. While I helped him with the logistic of the short story writing workshop that he gave, I had the opportunity to see him in action with the students. He worked wonders with those students. He motivated them in such a surprising manner and succeed at getting them to write amazing stories. They weren't students with a writer's, writer's profile. They were young university students who want to improve their Spanish through creative writing. For that reason, watching how my father adapted his experience of teaching workshop at uh, literary writing schools like Escuela de Escritores in Spain, to this type of environment helped me to understand how to broad a CV and how to feel how uh, and how the field of literary creativity dialogue with that of training for a specific purpose. And that is interesting. To, to indicate because when you are working in the United States, in the academic field of United States, and you want your, your writers to be succeed, you need to figure out how the experience they are having learning to do workshops, how they are going to be professionals and which kind of places they can share their learning experience. So it's not just like, oh, I'm going to be a writer. And no, it's also see, OK, how we can use these abilities, this creative talent in, in different settings. So to see how creative writing was perfect to help students learn in Spanish, to improve their Spanish and also their creativity was a great tool for me to be able later to communicate the power of having TAs to get funding for my students in Iowa. So I still have a copy of my father's syllabus. The course was entitled Approaches to Writing the Short Story, and it has been the foundation of all the creative writing workshop that I myself have designed uh, for the University of Iowa and the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland. I was invited at the University of St. Gallen in 2012 to teach a semester creative writing. Again, the University of St. Gallen is a economics, a business school, but they realize hmm, creative writing is an excellent tool to, to teach imagination, empathy, creativity to a different, a different audience. So that is something we have to keep in mind when we think on how to are going to help to professionalize our writers to have a nicer life writing and also teaching what they love, that is creativity.
Additionally, in the fall of 2008, the Center for Cartoon Studies invited me to teach a writing and reading workshop for the aspiring comics writers in their master's program in White River Junction. There, I had the opportunity to work with the students with a profile of comic strip artists like cartoonists and help them stretch their narrative and literary scope. A year later, the University of Iowa hired me to create and direct the MFA in Spanish Creative Writing, which they want to establish. I moved to the Midwest and I had to learn to adapt to the rhythm and their infrastructure of US public research universities. Dartmouth College is a private institution and belongs to the so-called Ivy League. The University of Iowa, on the other hand, is public and is one of the big 10. Apart from these university categories and the technical circumstance, going to Iowa City, the craft of the MFAs and the, of the Anglo-Saxon literary workshopping with their prestigious writers. Workshops seem like one of a kind opportunity, but it, it also significant was a great sacrifice. I left a fantastic job at Dartmouth College where I was a, developing a career researching comics and my research on childhood was taking off. I had also been carrying out several projects tied to activism and community engagement commitment as part as my pedagogical training. The years I was at Dartmouth and White River Junction were the years of the Huracan Katrina, and one of the projects I put together was to go to Biloxi, Mississippi in June of 2007 to the area impacted by, by the aid of the Huracan with a group of volunteers to collaborate with the NGOs hands on, on Gulf Coast to support the recovery effort. At the same time, I took charge of the daily logistic of the volunteers. I gave classes to migrant children that they were having difficulties integrating. The following year, I traveled to the Dominican Republic with a group of students to collaborate on projects with the Haitianian migrant community that work and live in dire conditions in the shanty towns of the sugarcane fields. During this period, I also traveled frequently to Mexico to gather information about the realities of abandoned children or children at risk who live under the direction of the National System for Integral Family Development, the DIF. When I was offered the possibility to develop the MFA in Iowa, I thought that it was fundamental that the project of, creating, of creative writing have a social activism, community engagement component, that the creativity and the workshops reach out the, to the community that surround the, surrounded them and that the writers share their passion for reading and writing with the children and adolescents at the Hispanic communities. While I began creating the entire academic curriculum, the technical workshops and the plan of studies, I also designed and founded the Spanish Creative Literacy Project, where children and adolescents have been the priority in the workshops and other community activities we have been carrying out since 2010. I cannot understand creativity as a profession without this social aspect of workshopping. Being a writer carries with it aspects of a life committed to the present. I must highlight that, Le that Leighton Lewis, full professor at Iowa, who was the chair of the Department of Spanish and Portuguese at the time they searched for the director of the MFA, was being conducted. He was the main motor behind the development of the program. Tom negotiated my contract with me in the spring of 2009. He knew how to convince me to accept, because in order to go to Iowa, I had to leave behind the, jo the, the job at Dartmouth and my involvement with the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction. For quite some time, Don Lewis had been considering the idea of a program in Spanish with the Chilean poet Oscar Hahn, who had been just retired as professor, and two other writers, the Chilean Roberto Ampuero and the Latino Santiago Baquera, who was the one who contacted me, who also taught classes in the department. But neither Roberto nor Santiago had tenure. That means their position as teacher wasn't consolidated, which means that the construction and management of the project fell on my shoulder because they, they, they hired me with a consolidated position. Otherwise, you cannot develop a program. You need to be consolidated as, as a faculty to have the power, you know, in, in many ways for all the technical parts. There were key people that helped me with the writing of the proposal on the project. In one hand, 
my colleague Brian Golnik, a professor and expert in Mexican literature. He was he's also a translator who has talent to editing my broken English. And also there was a geographer, Mark Armstrong, who in the summer of 2010, he was named director of the division, who knew a lot about technical things, a, te a technical language for the regions in the, you know, in the, in the system of Iowa. We are speaking about the state of Iowa. It's a kind of conservative state, so there is a lot of steps and logistics you have to go through to do that. And who he kindness, kindness um, and patience to help me with the formatting and many other practical aspects of the proposal. Through those years, other colleagues have arrived and have joined the project. In August 2011, we added the prestigious Central American writer Horacio Castellanos Moya to the group. He now has tenure, but at that time he was offered a contract thanks to finding from Digital Humanities. So I had to get to the Digital Humanities background to get the funding money. So we have, in many ways, we have to you know, write grants to get people. It's not like you are in Iowa and say, hey, give me everything. No, you have to work for every step of things because in, in public institutions, there is a lot of steps, applications, uh, proposals to write. That August of 2011, the Mexican writer Luis Humberto Crosswhite also arrived at the program and he was with us as, until spring 2013. So he was a visiting professor. And in the fall of 2012, the Spanish poet Luis Muñoz arrived now is the director. There are two other writers who we, we have worked with us. The Mexican Fritz Glockner, he was giving workshops in 2015. He came as visiting professor. And also in fall 2011, the Guatemalan writer Eduardo Halfon conducted workshops. Eduardo holds a special place in my heart because he was a finalist like me for the position in Iowa. I was chosen. And I've been dedicating 10 years, you know, to do all the administration of the program. All, but my friend Eduardo, on the other hand, has built a spectacular career as a writer. Uh, we both know that if he had to, the responsibility of developing the program, he would have forgo many aspects of his creative size. Having him as an inviting writing in Iowa, leading workshop when the MFA was bu fully built up and running was quite a delightful and in a special way. It was like closing the circle. For a time, Eduardo could imagine himself in another life as a professor at Iowa. He lived an experience of the MFA when it was fully established and now he's happy with his successful life as a writer in France. There are several things that seem key to our MFA and one is that our program is multi-workshopping. That is to say, to the writer who arrives for training can experiment with all type of workshops. Even though the students have a specific profile, they can train with different genres. The MFA is part of the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, and the students need to take several academic classes with research professors. Then there is the essential component of the workshop, which must be varied and permit the students to experiment with creating in different genres. They all participate in poetry and fiction workshops, but also in non-fiction, theater, which we offer regularly. I uh, have also frequently offered comics workshops, and one of, uh, on one of these occasions, the students from Iowa carry out a collaboration with the students at the Center for Cartoon Studies. That fantastic experiment turned into a dossier about comics for the digital journal Iowa Literaria. In addition, there is an open workshop strength to develop a project that can be in any genre. In the end, the students take seven or eight workshops and graduate with a creative thesis. The thesis, which must include workshop materials they have produced during their years at Iowa, is defended before a committee of three, an advisor and two readers. As the University of Iowa is a very special place with a variety of prestigious creative programs in English, our students also have the opportunity to take courses outside our department. Normally, they select workshops, seminars, or non-fiction seminars, as well as workshops offered under the MFA in Literary Translation. The most intense part of the management for me was coordinating admissions with an evaluating committee and securing funding so that all our admitted students had financed through assistantship 
and scholarships or a scholarship. I often have to adapt the materials of the aspiring Ibero-American candidates to the US system so their profiles were competitive and they could be evaluated by external committees because I need the money to finance them. And sometimes they come from countries where they have no perspective of how to apply for a US institution and how to grant the, the grant. So there is a lot of work on that part. And they could be evaluated external committees because they are competing for the IORs. The IORs also, the writers' workshop students are competing and they are coming from, from the Anglo experience. And so there is a, quite a lot of work there. Uh, or MFA is in Spanish, but the university administers everything in English. So I spend many hours while writing reports and letters in English. I truly enjoy teaching workshops. Creating and designing the poetry workshop helped me organize my own way of looking at poetry. Elaborating activities for different writers' profiles, those who don't necessarily want to be poets or even read too much poetry, but thanks to our workshop experiment, with that possibility, and they realize how much they love poetry and how important is poetry for them the rest of their life, I promise. Every student, no matter what is the relationship they have with poetry, change. They love poetry at the end of, this, of the two years in Iowa. The teacher, uh, the theater workshop is also very special because incidentally, I began to write theater in Iowa City and I was able to, to debut La Redención, my third play with Stegin that include a cast of community members and that continue in dialogue with the idea of social engage and commit, commitment and worshiping. It inspires me to think that, that writers who pass through here can experiment with the creative university adventure in an open and committed fashion. At least that is how I understand the idea of worshiping, tallerismo, and what it means to to be a writer who shares with others his or her creative pro process and aspires to having literature reach out everyone, like literature has to reach out everyone, the society, the community. The students organize a program of public bilingual readings in cafes through the city, which they, tell, they call subtitulados, and they are in Spanish with subtitles. While they are conducting the readings, they often produce entertaining fan scenes with creative parties with, which complement their proposals. So they work with MFA translation, a grad students, so, so they create beautiful booklets, they read out in the community uh, in translation, in Spanish, then the translation, so they, they um, you know, give energy to the community, so it's, it's great. In the spring of 2013, the first group of graduates, the pioneers, were two Hispanias, Rosario Merida with a work on, of fiction and Paula Lamami de Clarior with a work of poetry. Since then, we have not stopped celebrating the success of the students who have lived in the MFA with us. Among our graduates, the Argentina novelist Lolita Copacabana stands out, the recent prize winning Elisa Ferrer, she won the two skets uh, with Temporada Vispas in two, 2019. We must also mention poets Violeta Gil, Elena uh, Garcia Mariño, that they both recently published books. So we have already published um, Carlo Acevedo with a poetry collection that he won the Arcipreste de Ita Prize, among the narrators who stand out are Ivan Parra, who published his short story collection, the writer Miguel Serrano, uh, the Colombian artist and writer Jose Cobo. So there are many, many writers who pass through, through a program. We have also graduate students who are passionate about theater, and that's the case of Samuel Hambrovic. So for many, for many, you know, the, the last 10 years, because we, this year we just graduated the, the, the 10th promotion, we've been having, you know, many different students who are being, uh, bringing their, their, their passion and who are developing different elements and confronting creativity in, in such an important way. So, as I was explaining, the multi-workshops multi is vital for the developing of, of the program. So, and it was something that was discussed in the beginning because we knew we were going to be a small program and we have a gigantic you know, program that was very successful, that has 
a lot of dynamics, different dynamics. But we knew, like, and I always like to say, and I said yesterday, that when we have to look at the tradition of Hispanic writers, we have key figures who are able to navigate different genres, like Cervantes. Cervantes wants to be a play writer, and he was, you know, confronting Lope and seeing what was Lope was doing, and he was this kind of perspective of what he wants to do, and he end, you know, being a great novelist, uh, you know. Uh, so we see the same with uh, Borges. Everyone's uh, mentioned Borges as a fiction writer, but for me, Borges is the amazing poet. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, 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 of poet Borges. So for us, we have role models that we're having, you know, giving us the energy to discuss the possibility to bring our workshop together and to give the students all this experience of different workshops. Also, the outreach component was key. Again, Iowa is a rural state. It's a rural state with a lot of migrant community. And this migrant community needs our support. You cannot leave behind all the field workers. They are the ones who are bringing the, the field working economy alive. They are the ones uh, bringing the food to the plate. They are the ones working in, in hard jobs and their kids are going to schools and going to the high schools and that kids. And that experience of uh, engaging with the community that uh, com comes from before. When I was studying the PhD at, at the University of Pittsburgh, I was developing uh, a project, I was working on a project, the Queen in Singa project in the Hill District, in the Afro-American area of the city. And I was working with, a, um, um, I was doing capoeiristas, we were doing theater and capoeira with the Afro-American community. So to bring energy, to bring passion and creativity. So from that experience, I was working with uh, little kids in the school to develop plays and with all the choreography of the capoeira. So I, it was a, an amazing learning experience, how to be, bring energy and creativity to very dam damaged communities like that community in the Hill District in Pittsburgh. So from that experience, we were working on developing plays, develop, de developing the choreographies, uh, using capoeira as a way to connect with the roots, was the, ca the capoeira Angola. Then, when I went to work at Appalachian State University, I, it was a, it's a it's a beautiful university in the for teachers mostly it's a it's a, a educators you know a university is beautiful in the Appalachians, but many things were happening in that times so that um, it was the years of 2000. I defended 2001. 2000, I defend my thesis 2000. 2001, then we saw the, 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 the attack to the, the towers, um, the Twin Towers. So the impact that that attack had on education was huge, especially with the small schools, because I have many students who were soldiers, who were not being soldiers to be soldiers. They were being soldiers as a, as a way to, to upgrade their social situation. Uh, the United States, as you know, is, is a country, is an empire. So it's building themselves with war in many ways. As we know, Cervantes was a soldier also because in that times, you know, Spain was the empire. So what I learned over the, over the years, because I've been doing also workshops, or uh, I having students, you know, um, coming back from war who are veterans in, 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 in integrating themselves in the, in the system and one way to integrate in people with traumas, with big traumas in the system is through creativity, through doing workshops and engaging with them. So what I learned in the Appalachian, working in the Appalachian in one hand was the impact of war and how the war was affecting young, young people. Also, I was learning in the Appalachian about the Latino community much in, in, in a closer way because there they were working uh, in the fields of tobacco, the tobacco fields and the farming. So in that moment, for me, it was very important to support these uh, kids of the farm workers to bring them to the university, to give them fellowships and opportunities in the high school. Because as you know, the, the American society is very, extremely capitalist and very unfair. But 
at the same time you can find for them this this concept of the self-made person is possible because there is all this um, structure of donators and philanthropy but the thing is you have to find the way to work with the philanthropic people to help the people who really need it and to you know to recognize that type of communities and to connect that you know and to create a a, a space so to help people so in that years at at Boone, north carolina uh, i is, is when i was working on okay let's reinforce of the spanish department let's develop uh, uh, an, an ma for teachers that let's help the teachers to make them stronger and proud of teaching spanish let's connect with um, high schoolers so they don't drop high school and they see there is grants for from for them in the university so they're the ending life it's not just finishing to work a very hard work when you are very young. So then, like in the Appalachian, is why I remember that place, because they, Appalachian State in some ways taught me how America was in many ways, because I was still very young coming with the Spanish perspective of things, also the, the Netherlands perspective of things. So then I need to grow up in the American perspective of things that is totally different. And from state to state, things change even from community to community. But there is always, in from community to com community, community, a people who is going to need. And the Latino community, the migrants, are always need or help. And they speak Spanish, and you, you, you see a way to give them support and help. And that is very important. So when I, uh, I moved to Dartmouth, when I was at, at, at Appalachian, I took a, a program in Madrid, and the, 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 the program is still running by Benito del Pliego and Andres Fischer. I, in Appalachian, I hired Benito del Pliego, is a fantastic poet. If you don't know him, you should read him, and Andres Fischer also. Andres Fischer came to my position. So when I moved to Dartmouth, yes, this is something like with poets in, in America. So, so they are st still there teaching at, at, at that university. And then I moved to, to Dartmouth College, and in Dartmouth College is when my beloved friends of comics were building up next in the next state, just crossing the river, the Center for Cartoon Studies. For me, as I was explaining, the Center for Cartoon Studies is super interesting because I saw James Strom. You know, my training as a scholar is comic studies and cultural studies. So I suddenly saw James Strom having a project. Like we saw each other, we were in a comic festival in New York, and I just moved to Dartmouth. That, that is an example of serendipia. And he was in this comic festival, and we were in, in New York. We saw each other. Oh, James, Anna, how are you doing in Appalachia? I, said, I just moved to, to, uh, to, uh, to Dartmouth College, to New Hampshire. Really? I'm in Vermont. I'm trying to create a school for comics. How come? Yes, I have this idea that the creator of comics has to find a space to develop his ideas as an author. Remember, because the idea of the graphic novel is when the comic artists draw and write and does everything. So I was like, oh, such a nice idea. Can you imagine we saw each other in this festival and we realized we were close to each other as neighbors. So say, oh, count with me. So we went back together to, to, to the New England area. We took the train in New York for the parking lot. And can you believe we have our cars parked next to each other? <laughs> so you find, it's, like a, it's like a Borges story, you know, like, hello. So I start collaborating with, with him and working in the board and, you know, help him on the fundraising and the, de and the development of the curriculum. Curriculum is super important when you are going to develop a creative writing program, super important. You have to, two things, the curriculum, the funding, how you're going to get the money and the space goes with the finding. So I learned a lot because in the beginning, like James is like, oh, I have this idea. Of, a, of, of this program, I said, okay, you have this. And we were meeting in a, he rent a small office in an old hotel, the Colotni, it's a hotel, old hotel in White River Junction that was like, okay, the Jana, you know, and just I need a space to develop this. Okay, let's, let's do it. So it was beautiful because I learned with him every, every step of how to develop an MFA for comic artists. And the MFA, the Center for Cartoon Studies in Vermont, is extremely successful. It's a case of success. And one thing was like, you know, how to learn to, with, uh, to speak with possible sponsors, looking for people who will feel empathy for your project, who will understand your passion, who will want to help you. And there is 
amazing people out there who will understand the impact that creative writing can have in a community and it's what we call a creative economy it's true like in the case of iowa city we are having you know a city where the university has the power and you follow that steps but the case of the center for cartoon studies in white river junction is the opposite it's a forgotten small town that Nobody was taking care because it was a very important a, a city for the rail, railroad, for the trains. But, you know, America turned into cars and into highways. So it was a forgotten, beautiful, small town. And a person with imagination, with passion, with an idea like James Sturm, and he later brought Michelle Oli to him, decides, I'm going to make this place creative. I'm going to make this place special for people with creativity. So I'm going to convince everyone around me to join with passion about this project. And this is going to bring creative economy. The co economy of the little town with the Center for Cartoon Studies is blooming. What better to have than a creative writing place than anything else? You know, don't, you know, people think, oh, let's develop economy. Let's bring a dirty factory. Let's, you know, no. Let's bring creative writing to a small town to make that town blooming. Because students, because people get engaged, because bring new hope, because suddenly the place bloom. And for me, it was you know super inspirational. And James was when I was like, oh, I'm going to add you. I was like, okay, Anna, get ready because it's not going to be like this. You are going to have to learn totally different things. Iowa, the state of Iowa is totally different, you know, and it was. Believe me, it was. But I always say, you know, Iowa turned me into a fiction writer, a play writer. Before, I was just you know, in a comic scholar, a literary children literature, poetry, poetry, poetry. So when I have to confront the experience of Iowa and the workshops, I have to learn to be something else. And what's good, I learn. I'm happy, and I'm very happy. I can share with all of you all these things that I learned, all, all these aspects that are vital to, to develop. One thing that was interesting is that I implement, since the early years at Boone, and have to traveling with the students because I used to do many travel ar uh, abroad programs with the students. I have this kind of temper that, oh, let's, let's, you know, let's get to know a country. And they, when they were looking for volunteers to direct programs abroad, it was, oh, let's go to Madrid with 25 students. Oh, let's go to Buenos Aires. Let's go to Mexico, Puebla. Let's go, you know, I will go. One thing I was always doing with my students that I keep doing with everyone in all the workshops with writers is to ask them to write a diary. I'm a big fan of diaries. I have, I write obsessively diaries. So no matter who is the person who is having the experience with me, they will end having to write a diary. A diary about emotions, thoughts, and by hand. I want them to have a notebook and by hand and be able at the end of the day to think about things or being able to thought you know, to write down their thoughts, not the t -t 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 in the telephone. No, 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 no. Because when you are using your hand, you're using a different part of your brain. That is super important. People think that it's very simple just to type in the, in the telephone. That is fine if you want to type whatever. But if you want to project uh, emotions, it's very important to keep working and using your hand. The handwriting is super important for the development of the brain. So I've been doing it with students, undergrads. I've been doing it with adults who say, well, this lady is asking me to write by hand. You know, so I've been developing, inserting that element always on my, on my classrooms. Also, with the students right now in my theater, in my theater class, an, an element is that, OK, they can write. They say, Anna, I don't know about theater. Well, you have to learn what, how theater works, what, what is a social space. So let's go to see plays. Because everyone is very used to see movies. Everyone is very used to see movies in, in their phone or in their computer. I want them to breathe the human sensation of the body. I want them to see the space, the, the how the logistic of a play is setting. So if, when you, if, even if you don't, you don't say, oh, I don't want to, to study plays. I don't want to do um, theater. Go to theaters, see the sensations, see how the actor work. For me, it was, was really interesting 
when I put together a play, my first play in St. Gallen, uh, and then to Zurich, uh, and, and work with actors and see how they see the test and how they feel. And with, uh, with writers, what I do uh, in my workshops is I make them, every time we have to workshop poetry, I make them uh, to read out loud their poetry. So in the classroom, they have to bring their poetry, we read it, but they, we have to feel that person to project their voice. It's super important. They cannot be, well, I'm a, yeah, I'm not a poet, and you're just making me to write poetry, and then, ah, oh, no, I, I want you to feel the, 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 the sensation of the wording, the projection of your voice, how you are going to communicate, how you are going to give yourself to the audience, how the audience can suddenly feel you. Another thing I, I like to do is, if I'm doing theater, well, everyone has to go to see plays and comment on the plays later, to communicate, to, to, to perceive all the elements. So I, I want them, and also I make them to work together a, a, a group project. I think group projects are vital on the development, development of the writer, because us as a community of writers, is not just alone in the table writing and feeling a lot of emotion. It's also the way we communicate our passion. Because when you are deciding to, to do through the experience of workshops, it's also because you want to bring the workshops to others. It's not like, I want to do workshops because you know I want to be a writer and I need the help, because a workshop is going to facilitate your, your life a lot. It's like, I think workshops, I'm a, a true believer of workshops because it can save you years of writing. Years of writing alone and feeling lonely and not uh, engaging with other people who can read you and give you key ideas. So, but also it's very important you collaborate, you understand the other readers, you give them feedback, you share your thoughts, you learn how to read critically a book so you can understand the other person's work. And also when you finish and you get your degree, you can create workshops everywhere because workshops are the place where you can teach communities empathy, you can help communities in, in, in difficult situations. So there is many, uh, so it's true that there is the professional workshops for professional writers, but it's also how we are going to bring back to the community as lucky professional writers that other people can feel, you know, how important is literature and how important is to communicate. Because sometimes like people is taking workshops not to be a writer, just to feel engaged and to enjoy literature. So, there, so and I believe in all the type of workshops. I, I, I think there is the professional writing, but also there is the educative workshop for children who has a great impact. When I do with the creative literacy workshop, uh, I go with, 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 with our students to the uh, schools to work with kids. For that kids, it's an amazing, it's an amazing experience. So I'm going to show you now a few pictures of just of all the things I just told. I just a little bit of pictures just to close this this talk. So the pictures, por favor, las imágenes. So this is the the graduation flyer of or this year students Arturo Camacho. He did an amazing. He's working on science fiction, so it was good because I was on a Sawyer Mellon seminar and he was taking the seminar with comics. So I, I was, he was able to meet Joe Sacco and the Hernandez brothers and he was drawing some of the elements. He felt like to draw some elements of his novel that he's working on, the science fiction. Uh, one detail, you will say, well, uh, at, the, at the end of the year, the end of the, end of the year MFA for uh, fiction writers is 80 pages of their novel. You know, in two years, there is some students who come with all a lot of energy, what, like um, um, in the case of Elisa Ferrer, who had the novel in her head, so the two years gave her the time to finish the novel. Others, they are looking for the ideas soon, so what we ask them is 80 pages, you know, a minimum of 80 pages of their project, 80 pages, 80 pages. So, Lara do Pazo wrote a beautiful book of poems. She's from Galicia. Mireya Hernández, a beautiful non-fiction book. So I, I hope uh, see Lara and Mireya Hernández uh, book soon. Maria José Plata Flores, she's from Colombia. She's uh, writing a novel. 
uh, Gabriela Roman. She wrote a beautiful book of short stories. She's an amazing uh, poet and playwright of, uh, of Mexico. And Camila de Rioste, she's a writer from Bolivia, playwright. She wrote uh, an amazing novel that I enjoy a lot uh, working with her as advisor. And now she's, because she's bilingual, she's taking the writer's workshop. So, so she's, but I hope she keeps writing in Spanish so, because her talent is unique in both languages. So this is, a, this is a, group, a photo group with Horacio, with Luis Muñoz, with our students for first and second year this year, and, and alumni. So we are here, so celebrating the 10 years graduation. This is an early picture of when I arrived with uh, Santiago Baquera Vázquez and uh, Roberto Ampuero. In that time, they were at the University of Iowa. And there is Santiago ba uh, Gamboa, who was uh, visiting Iowa at this time. There is a lot of writers who pass by because the International Writing Program, because the Writers Workshop. So this is an early picture. I look pretty young. So this is one of the activities I do with UNESCO um, for this cre Creative Literacy Project. So we were in the, doing the book festival for children. So I took my, grad my you know, MFA students and we were doing storytelling with, with toys. So I was very engaged as a Wonder Woman, so trying to bring, the, so because you, you know, we were working with kids, we were doing this project with kids. So there is uh, a nice picture where they were telling improv stories about you know the characters they were having. This is another. This is with undergrads who were taking creative writing, so they were also bringing elements uh, to the community. This is a nice picture from the early years of the Center for Cartoon Studies when I met. A, Yes, Stur, there was in a center. He managed to find a, spa, a space, to, he managed to, to rebuild a building. And we got Michelle Oli, James Stur, there's me back laughing, and we have the support of Art Spiegelman and Francois Moly. So there was a, a, a lot of things, very interesting things happening, and, and for me it was a learning experience. I will be always grateful. This is a moment I was in, in the Republican Dominican with a project uh, with with children. This is another moment uh, where, you know, uh, writers has to take position and have to speak out for the community. And um, I'm an American citizen also because uh, I've been living many years in the United States and I also believe like you have to commit and say what you think. So I've been involved on supporting the Latino community, supporting the migrants, supporting DACA, supporting, you know, the kids who were uh, who were uh, migrants to the United States and they they didn't got uh, recognition so they can be part of the of the of the community and part to be United States citizens so this is um, a moment that we were uh, supporting that openly and when you are a citizen you can speak out it's something I tell sometimes my colleagues that you know they they they've been for many years and they were ah say well if if you cannot vote who's going to select the right you know, people in charge, you know, something important to keep in mind. So, the, a ver, this is, you know, one of the workshops when we are with the little kids. This is, you know, some of the elements that we create. I love to create materials because I love to draw, so I create materials to stimulate. So, how, how you do a storytelling, how you, you know, how we, we create stories, how we develop stories. So. This is a, an activity about cuenta tu último sueño, develop, you know, tell us your last dream, you know, so we develop different activities. There is, you know, different things that we've been promoting poetry in different ways with the university. Was this a funny one? Put my face and say promote poetry. So how you make the community aware that there is things happening, that poetry is important. So they, we look for different systems and way. This is me getting involved on a play with the Latino, there was a play called Shu by Marisela Treviño of the theater department. And it was very funny because they were helping me to develop, to put in together th things. So they were casting for a, 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 a lady of age. And they were like, Anna, we're looking for a lady of age. And I said, well, you know, I have an accent. We need a lady of age with an accent for the graduation. Pro. <laughs> well, but I'm horrible Spaniard. Well, your accent sounds very great for Marisela Treviño. She thinks you can be the evil mother of the play. Can you help us? So because they were so nice over the years, the theater department helping us, I felt like myself like, OK, I have to, OK, I will do the, the Renata. This is the Renata character. 
And I remember I have to, in the morning, wake up, learning the lines. I have the lines in the kitchen, going to work, and by night, doing so a lot of admiration for actors. By night, you know, going to, to training, to do the practice, to do the, it's five weeks. So this, for me, it was a beautiful experience. I used to do uh, theater when I was young. There was many years passed by, so it was a nice way to reconnect and integrate it with the theater department. They were, this was a Maricela Trevino, she's a Latino um, theater, theater uh, um, playwright. She was graduating and she was doing the new play festival play and, and I was the mother. Of, and this, these were all my kids, so it's <laughs> nice. So, and it was a successful, uh, she's a very, very successful playwright. The United States. So this is how I work with the community, with the La Redención uh, undergrad was the director, so we put together uh, with actors, uh, this, um, different members of the community, some faculty who were in um, Eloy Barragán, he's a professor of theater, he's Mexican, so we were working on also bringing free theater in Spanish to the community. This is a, a cover of Iowa Literaria, look for it. It's a great uh, magazine, it's the magazine of the MFA. And this is one moment we are having uh, Ines Martin Rodrigo. She came uh, this spring to Iowa, so we are with Horacio. We are in, in the Overman Center speaking about creativity. And this is all. So thank you so much. If you have And thank you for your patience. And I know, you know what I mean, we are ready for... Hello, thank you very much. Uh, I re I'm really interested, I have two questions. So one is, in what sense, I mean, if it, the Spanish program in Iowa is like, not a copy, but it's similar to the English one, or if there are particularities, okay? And the second question is, how do you relate um, social action and creative writing? In those projects, you said that, uh, for example, you go with your uh, students to the schools, but I didn't quite understand what they do. They teach them creative writing or how you relate creative writing to this community engagement actions. Exactly. So uh, the first question is the Spanish MFA is different from the uh, writer's workshop because we do a multi, multi workshops. So our students, even your final project is a book of poems. You will have to experience with non-fiction, theater, um, fiction, so try to, to participate in that workshop. So all the, all the group of students are from different areas of, of creativity. And some of them, they have the talent to work different, uh, all of them or a few of them or, or just focus on one, but they have to experience all of that. Because we're a small department, in compared with the writer's workshop, the writer's workshop af after the second world war start growing with the success, remember the United States millions of of people, so they, reside, uh, they decide to divide poetry and fiction. And then they, they also, but not part of the writer's workshop, they have non-fiction program, theater program, so there is different MFA in translation program, there is different programs. So our program, the, part, the particularity that makes it very strong is that the student has the experience of living, uh, working in different workshops and perceiving other perspective and getting to know areas that maybe before didn't feel attraction because I, in my, in my life, I've been finding many people who just read poetry or just fiction and they have, nah, nah, nah. so suddenly they, they, oh, because I'm telling, if you want to be a good fiction writer, you need to, to control dialogue. You need to, you know what I mean? You need to control a beauty on the way you write. So poetry, even if you are not going to write poetry, the, ever again and it's just to read poetry is going to give you the energy to try to find the rhythm of words it's going to make your fiction writing much better so they realize that and and they enjoy that the other thing is as we do uh, at the creative literacy project as as i did it and as i developed was 
First, we were participate, participating in, in schools uh, in the area where migrant, where kids of migrant workers go to help them uh, literacy, how to, how to improve their, 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 their Spanish knowledge and the ability to read and write in Spanish. So, and we, one way of working with literacy, as I learned in Biloxi, when I teach little kids, is through creativity. So, uh, uh, doing creative activities for, for, for little kids in the schools, it gives them a lot of uh, proudness. And also, when there are kids in, at risk, sometimes we go to communities at risk, that a writer goes with them, speak them about their passion for reading a writer, speaking of them in Spanish, in the language that their parents talk at home. And sometimes they feel ashamed in, in the school because they speak in English, and if they speak Spanish, they suddenly they feel proudness because as I always I explain, it's like speaking two languages, it's like having two houses. You are not going to give away one of your houses. You have one house in, in, in the big city and another thing is the wonderful Indian Island in, in the sea. Why you why you are going to give away that? So a way to bring that, you know, that tool and talent. And I always say Spanish is a superpower. And that's why my Anglo students take Spanish because they want to have that superpower, the ability to communicate with, with a lot of people. So uh, so when, the, when there is festivals in town, like the Children Festival, so we will volunteer and do activities for the Spanish speaking community in a creative way. So storytelling, all this, because again, I want my students also to learn engagement. And, and they do subtitulado, so there is different elements. In my case, I have this passion for, for kids and youth. I have a lot of fun with them, so I will be the one going with children. Other will be, okay, we are going to, the, you know, this other thing, <laughs> enjoy. So yeah, I hope I was able to answer. Muchas gracias, Ana. Um, it's, um, there's a lot of information that for me is very valuable because as you know, I'm in the US territory, although Iowa is very different to Puerto Rico, <laughs> but I mean, um, I'm uh, directing this MFA that has no funding at all for students. And um, however, it's attractive for Spanish speaking people from the that is in the US um, because it's also an um, MFA that is remote is uh, something that I don't like but it, it was like that when I got there and I wanted to ask you uh, what advice would you have to start looking for funding uh, uh, because I have many ideas but I don't know where to start and then I also have a question about how big is the cohort and if, if it's a, the, the, the cohort is related to the amount of funding the department has or, or, or if it's not connected. Okay, uh, in, the, in the thing is when I came to Iowa, I negotiated that I was going to have a quorum of students and I also that they need to be a, a founding because I want to bring really good students from everywhere, and I didn't want the economic situation limit them. That for me was key. You know, if you know, otherwise will be a different type of program. That's fine, but you know, for me, so we are very lucky in, in the way that we have the awards and we have the the also the TA ship, the TA ship teaching assistant and the Spanish department. It's so why this year I was the director of the undergrad studies this year, or this year because I want to reinforce the learning is Spanish. So I want, uh, you know, students to appreciate the Spanish, you know, learn Spanish undergrads because undergrads are the ones who are going to give my graduates jobs. So it's something, it's not like, ah, you're a writer, la, la, la. No, no, you need the, all the community, all the parts of the university working so you can make sure everything is healthy. So, uh, and, and, uh, and also to develop, uh, you know, passion and admiration for the Spanish language and on the Anglo-Saxon community. It's not that, like, I, I want all these all this connections. So one thing very important in my experience with fundraising is searching different institutions and people that can give you funding. So in my case, uh, I've been working, for example, with Washington, uh, with the Spanish uh, Embassy Cultural Attaché. Uh, in this case, I have a really good relation. Like, 
you know, building up that so they can bring me when they are bringing uh, writer, Spanish writers to the United States, they can jump to Iowa. Meanwhile, I look for funding to have a hotel for the writers and I take it care because I think it's very important for my students to have the opportunity of having writers. Then when there is, you know, this kind of grants for money, for events, for different things. So I sit down, I look the, the right people. I, I, I develop a, an Overman seminar on comics and I was making this, this this year, a Sawyer Mellon Seminar Foundation. So I work with scholars that we understand each other, have passion for, for comics and creativity. So, and we develop a, a, a project that includes the academic part. So people in academia, we need also allies from, from the scholars but also we want the creative thing. So to negotiate that, okay, X number of scholars with this grant, but let's bring this X number of writers so the, you know, the writers has the experience. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and you need allies. Like uh, whatever you build, and that is the, the perspective I have, whatever you build has to be something that have a structure that can be resisting without you. So you, you bring the, you help to build, you bring the energy, but then you leave the right people to keep sustaining. Engaging with the community. I'm, I've been in the board of the Riverside Theater I, and we're very interesting years. We managed to do a fundraising. We have a new building. Uh, it's a nonprofit. So working with the community, you know, targeting who is in the, who, who is in the community going to be sensitive. Puerto Rico, which companies support the Spanish, you can speak then about with foundations, can you know at least fi finance one or two, P two students who you can be, uh, because if you, if you, if you admission is based on, on merit, on, on, on creative ability, not on, on money, you are going to have really, really good in, in, in students. So, so things that way. So, uh, but, uh, but you, need, you cannot be on your own. So you need to, to create synergies. See which people can understand you, which other faculty can understand you, which members of the community. Sometimes there is retired, lovely retired people in your community who were accounting, who were having jobs that can help you a lot. And you speak them and, and you, you help, you know, ask them for help. And they will, they will be willing to help. You're surprisingly, sometimes it's just you need to ask and say, hey, I have this project you know, knocking doors, spreading the word, things like that. And then you will find, oh, someone, you know, work, work in this type of thing can give you, or, you know, this foundation, you know, looking for that. But you need, yeah, you need to be, again, a group of people, and you need to make pressure the institution that they give solid job to the people that work with you. So you can, you can push and also make collaborations with other departments. So it's why I ended up being Renata, you yeah. know, because I'm learning the lines. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think from the front, um, so very welcome. A round of applause for you. Oh, thank you. No, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Anna, for the very inspiring uh, lecture that you gave. And I think for all of us, creating schools, creating um, corporations here, creating our own MFAs. Um, this is really inspiring and I think uh, you will not have heard the last of us um, and I hope you will be available for uh, sharing your wisdom and, and your experience. Um, I would like to close the, um, the conference now officially, of course. Um, we have all been watching these empty glasses there um, in case you were thinking this signifies anything uh, other than, uh, uh, than a performance, uh, it, it means that we actually are going to bring out the toast, aren't we, Alex? Yeah. So, um, sorry. Yeah. I want to thank uh, some people, of course. I want to thank you, um, all the people that gave workshops, that shared their lectures with us. Um, I don't know how you are. I'm, I'm full of new thoughts. I'm very tired um, and very energetic at the same time. I have this urge to go to you and to you and to you and to you. Um, let's keep in touch. That's what I wanted to say. I think we have experienced a wonderful conference. 
on uh, creativity, on thoughts uh, that um, you might share um, with your students, but now we share them amongst us teachers. And there was something marvelous going on. I, I said to Anna before, when we are uh, in front of a class, they are playing, and now we were playing. And it was something, something very special to, uh, to experience. We are closing the conference, but we are not saying goodbye, of course. Um, the association, which, by the way, from today on, thanks to Nadia Sinewald from the Berlin University, will no longer be pronounced as E-A-C-W-P. But, Nadia, can you please stand up and say, what are we going to be? Equip. Equip. We equip everyone <laughs> so we don't have to change anything, it will be equip. <laughs> Let's see, let's see if that holds. Um, uh, we are not saying goodbye, as I said. We are, um, uh, we are going to be alive um, and more than ever after the pandemic. We will have another symposium next year hosted by uh, Esquivel Esquivel in Lisbon. And... Uh, <laughs> And in 2025, we will have um, another conference hosted by our dear friends from Aleph in Paris, France, which is also... <laughs> and in the meantime, um, don't forget about this. Look each other up, email each other, check the website, call R Lorena and say, this person with, he was always wearing this, he spoke about this, who is he? And Lorena will know. Um, and that brings me before um, um, uh, the finalization to uh, a round of applause for Lorena, of course, our great organizing general manager. <laughs> and I also would like to thank the Casa Arabe for the wonderful, wonderful uh, venue that we were in and all the support that we got. Yeah. And last but not least, I, uh, we have been walking around this uh, for days with this thread, you know, that we would end up in someone's novel. Um, <laughs> if not Alex's novel, I, I tried to read one of Alex's novels. I don't hope to end up in one of those. Um, uh, I would like to uh, share the stage now with Javier Sagarna um, and thank the team of the Escuela. Uh, thank you very much to you all for coming. Thank you very much to you all for making this possible. Uh, the conference we, well, we have made a part, but the, the conference is made by all by you, your collaborations, your contributions. That's the conference. No? So you are the, have made this conference. So thank you very much to you all. Um, thank you <clears throat> very much. To the well, to the ACWP, no? <laughs> represented here in, in his president. Uh, Institutional presence. <laughs> presence. That's it. Uh, yes, the ACWP is, a, is a, an amazing, amazing pro, uh, project, and uh, well, we have been part from the from the very start, and we have been continue, we are con going to continue being part there, and, and well, it's great to see that it's alive. We have we say that this has to be the, the conference for the future. I said in my, in my starting uh, speech, and yes, it has been the, the conference of the future. No, I, I'm quite sure. I'm seeing all of you here. I, I know that we have we have started the future now. No? So I'm very very happy with this. Um, <clears throat> and now I want to thank all the people that have made this possible. Uh, I want to thank the. All the people in Casa Arabe, I want to thank Irene Lozano, Cristina Juarranz, eh, Olivia Orozco. I want to thank Hugo. I want to thank Martin up there in the, in the, in the, in the technicals. Eh, <clears throat> I 
and, and of course, of course, I want to thank Lorena again. Again, Lorena, we have made this. I want to thank uh, Isabel Wagerman that has been there making all the photos. <laughs> And of course, I want to thank my beautiful team, the, uh, the heroes, that's the heroes, that's the, that's the way I was, <laughs> I, I had to qualificate them, that have made this possible all the time with the certs that they are, uh, being everywhere, solving any problems. And uh, please, I, I ask, uh, I want to say their names, Alejandro, Mariana. Uh, Umberto, they are, they are now there, uh, the rest, Umberto, uh, Lucia, and Germán, they are all preparing the, the open mic. So they are not here, but I, I, I think they deserve a, a big applause also, the team, please. You are... You're incredible, guys. Thank you very much for all what you have done. And that's it, that's it. Uh, I think we have, at, uh, we have there this, this, there he goes, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know how to name now, in English, the caps. So let's let Frank to make the toast as the president of the SUV. Yes, he is there. So a fi final thing, of course, is everybody toast. Tonight at 10.15, you are all obliged to sing at the open mic at the Escuela de, Co de Escritores in the Calle Covarrubias. So we expect you there. So, we did it. Let's toast with the magic words, right? Yeah. <laughs> So we have to speak to Anna when we are doing the curriculum to just send it to her and check. In the bring this maybe when we make the post. Toast. Do we have drinks? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose they can. <laughs> Oh, there they are. I hope they have more than two bottles. <laughs> yeah, I <hope> so. <laughs> That's why, no, I, probably. For the price, I, there might be more. <laughs> This one, I think in the, in the, in the, they have the wine, no? And then we open the last one. No, well, no, we can, we can pour it in. We do it for, for a minute. No, 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 not to, not to, not to, not drop it. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Javi? Let's see, uh, Anna?
it stay? Yeah, it stays. Do we all have a glass of wine or champagne? Yeah. No? There are some Belgian people without champagne. Feed the Belgians, feed the Belgians, please. Yeah. There are some Italian people without champagne. Feed the Italians, please. So before we bring out the toast, we have a lot of champagne. Before we bring out the toast, we just heard some wonderful news um, that we didn't know when we decided upon uh, the next conference. Alain uh, just told us that when we are in Paris in 25, this, the school in Paris, Alef, will celebrate its 40th anniversary. So that's a great one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So has everybody, even Martino, as okay. All the Belgian people, yes, okay, great. Yeah. So, um, whoa, I hope that was not, uh, it was an empty bottle, it was an empty bottle. Um, we, Javier and me, only have one way of bringing out this toast. We didn't uh, spoke about this, so I hope we are going to say the same thing. And I count to three, Javier, and then we can say it. One, two, three. Two, three. Viva la poesia! See <laughs> 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 <Two> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. One last question, question not. Yes, we have a nice photographer here, so don't leave without the big photo. Um, it will be in the gardens, okay? We will be a nice photo with all of us. Okay, I will tell, I will tell. It's not. Okay, there we go. We are going to take our glasses and our wine outside, and Isabella is going to take a wonderful picture of us. So let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get some sun and a beautiful picture.